Hello everyone, welcome back to the latest lecture session. In the last session, we looked at understanding theta c and uh, relevant variables, right? And in this session, we are going to pick up where we left uh, in the last session, namely, we were discussing food to microorganism ratio, right? And how is that relevant to our system? That's something we will look at now, right? Let's see what I have here. So, it's food to microorganism, right? Food can be based on S naught, what is coming in or what is coming in minus going out. So, it depends on uh, uh, what is it, uh, who or which textbook or such people look at. So, it can be something like this microorganisms in the system or as I mentioned, you can just have Q S naught by V X 2. So, that is one aspect to keep in mind. Okay. So, then uh, what is this giving me an idea about in the first case? It gives me an idea about the kind of bacteria that can thrive and thus the kind of flock or settling characteristics, let us say, right. Let us uh, look at it. So, here we have two figures, a variation of this figure, we looked at it earlier as in that figure was somewhere like you had this lag growth phase where you had acclimatization and such and then remarkable level of growth and relatively uniform growth and then stable and then decay, right. So, we had different stages there. So, again this is uh, a variation of that figure. So, what do we have here? Characteristic growth phase of a pure culture of bacteria and this is when we have substrate. Let us say substrate is somewhere out here and substrate or the food is being consumed, right. So, that is what you have out here. It is something like this. So, if there is food available and that is how it is going to decrease. On the y axis, we have concentration of biomass or the microbes. On the x axis, we have time and also some information about the substrate available, let us say, right. So, here I have a lot of substrate and this is again in a pure culture as in that there is no inflow, no outflow. So, initially microbial concentration is very less and uh, or you know it is x naught and there is an acclimatization phase and then an exponential growth phase, right. And then you are going to have uh, what do we say log growth or such where you have uniform growth characteristics. And then you are going to have declining growth phase and then stationary and endogenous. Somewhere out here you see that almost all the substrate is uh, 0 let us see, right and initially substrate is the maximum. But how is this still occurring? Here we have endogenous respiration, right stationary phase and endogenous phase as in the cell mass of the relevant microbes are being consumed let us say for the microbes to be able to survive let us say endogenous respiration. So, that is one aspect to keep in mind. Here though is that you know as bacteria die or I think uh, reach this bacteria reach this endogenous phase, they give out a slime layer. I think we have the pictures again from MIT open courseware. So, these slime layers I guess uh, help in forming flocks and maybe the bacteria sticking together if I can use layman's terms. So, if you can see to it that your particular microbial population is in this phase, you are going to have good sludge and sludge settling characteristics. So, that is what we see here. So, here we have on the x axis food to microorganism ratio and here on the y axis we have rate of metabolism, right. How fast are they or how well are they metabolizing, right. So, what do we have out here? So, in the exponential growth phase, right, the firstly the settling characteristics are going to be poor. Here we have higher F by M and higher metabolic growth rate. What happens when you have higher food to microorganisms ratio? Let us just understand that before I think we are go before we look at that in detail. A lot of food and less microbes, right? So, there is a food everywhere. So, the kind of microbes that are going to have or that are going to thrive or what are called as motile uh, microbes, let us say, right? These can move based on their or you know they have a free will if you can say so and they can move in search of food, let us say, right? And so, these form flocks which are called pin flocks. I think we looked at some such figure earlier when we were talking about settling or sedimentation, pin flocks and they do not settle well, let us say. So, that is one aspect to keep in mind, poor settling characteristics, let us say. And also because the food or our waste is pretty high in this relevant system, 
it's also going to leave the system through my effluent. So, some of the or the concentration of the waste in the effluent is going to be relatively higher. So, that is one aspect to keep in mind f by m here let us see right. So, this is something that we do not want. So, if the f by m is too low right f by m is too low again you are going to have different kinds of uh, what do we say issues with respect to sludge bulking and such. So, again as I mentioned we want that uh, sweet spot where we have the uh, slime being formed and I guess it is between this declining growth phase and this endogenous uh, growth phase let us see right and this is the range of operation that is ideal. So, that is what we have out here and you see that the f by m is not too low, but it is certainly not too high right. So, that is one something uh, that is something to keep in mind. Let us move on. So, high f by m ratio meaning high food right. So, they grow fast and you know slime layer is thin again here we are talking about I think the exponential growth phase that is something to keep in mind. You know we have motile bacteria and they have high energy to swim to food thus pin flock right poor settling in secondly clarifier first poor settling and also high food. So, both ways not a great uh, aspect for us I guess right. So, excess food is carried away treatment efficiency is poor. By playing around with the variables we can get this, uh, we looked at this in terms of x and so on and so forth. Why is that yield coefficient? E is the efficiency of removal S0 minus S by S0 into F by M right F by M minus KD let us see. So, what do you see here when F by M is high right theta C will be less or the cell residence time will be less right F by M again if that is one aspect to keep in mind. So, if I keep the cell residence time the same and if I increase the f by m what will happen the efficiency of the process obviously will have to come down. So, that is something to keep in mind if I increase the food to microorganism ratio the efficiency will come down. So, right efficiency is this. So, that is something to keep in mind and with low f by m uh, what is it that we see low f by m meaning low food and more uh, relatively more microorganisms again everything is relative let us say. So, the microbes are starved now right they are uh, pretty hungry uh, there might be some endogenous respiration, but we are not at uh, at the phase where there is only endogenous respiration because you are still providing the R waste or uh, the food or the substrate right. So, that is one aspect. So, what is going to happen here right so, undergoes or starts to undergo or experience endogenous respiration. So, a lot of uh, relatively high deaths and more predatory or predation let us say and so KD is increased let us say right. Nearly all substrate is consumed. So, thus we have high treatment efficiency. I think we also saw this 1 by theta c is equal to yield into efficiency into f by m minus KD that is what we saw earlier. So, with a low f by m right and for the same theta c keeping theta c the same you see that the efficiency will increase that is something to uh, keep in mind. And also if we maintain it at the say uh, sweet spot we know that there is going to be a slime that is going to be formed and also you are going to have the right combination of flock forming and filamentous microorganisms. So, it results in good settling flock and thus good efficiency in the secondary clarifier. Let us see if we have some pictures ok we will come by that later. So, cell slime layer is thickest at the start of endogenous growth phase let us see right just at the start and thus that leads to best conditions for flocculation. Slime layers by dying cells may glue right it is gluey layer right that holds the uh, what do we say flocks together. Slime layers are formed when we have dying cells let us say right and for getting this slime layer though we need to have good aeration for the living cells or when they were living to create the relevant polysaccharides that make up the slime right. So, to get to the conditions that can lead to formation of slime or this gluey layer or sticky layer you need to aerate it well let us say right. So, that is something to keep in mind. Let us see if we have pictures ok. So, here we have the bacteria with the relevant uh, slimy layer all around it let us say and then activated sludge flocks with slime. So, this is the sticky layer that we want or trying to uh, get let us see right that is when that is what we get when we maintain the f by m ratio at a sweet spot. So, let us look at some aspects. So, high f by m f theta c is the same poor efficiency and typically characteristic of what do we say low theta c if we look at it the other way 
and uh, low f by m obviously better and more complete degradation and better settling characteristics if we can maintain the f by m uh, such that just uh, the system is just at the endogenous growth phase obviously for that long uh, relatively long uh, theta c but what are the issues for long theta c right that means more recycle more recycle meaning larger thus more costlier aeration tank right and obviously if the microbes are spending a lot of time and also the substrate removal is more i need to provide a lot more oxygen let's say right and uh, well i should not say poor settleability this is the case when i have a very long theta c right but not in general and high powers let's say high high power obviously that's from the requirement of more uh, recycle and more oxygen let's say right but if you maintain the theta c and f by m at the sweet, sweet spot you will not experience poor settleability let's say let's move on so bulking of sludge let's say this is one common factor that ruins many indian treatment plants or quite a lot of treatment plants around the world so you have the aeration tank microbes are degrading it uh, it meaning our waste once they go to the secondary settling tank or secondary sedimentation tank or clarifier what needs to happen you are not going to provide air you are not going to provide turbulence you need to provide what do we say the kind of bacteria that form flocks and settle down but depending on the f by m and theta c you are going to have uh, what do we say sludge that's not going to settle down but for, uh, you know have bulking of sludge let's say so what is this characterized by have uh, the solids having poor settling characteristics it accumulates in the secondary clarifier and even can overflow the side walls right so with respect to f by m ratio and its effect on the bulking of sludge again bulking of sludge unlike what you might have heard from what i have seen or read let's say there seem to be various uh, factors that can lead to bulking of sludge so one can be filamentous one can be non filamentous and such let's look at some of the uh, what do we say factors or variables that can lead to bulking of sludge so here we have high f by m ratio okay encourages the growth of filamentous microbes like spherotylus and causes bulking of sludge right so that's one aspect and the relevant aspects are given low f by m ratio and long sludge age favors the growth of nocardia microbes causing bulking of sludge and more importantly foaming i think i have a picture here okay so you can uh, see the kind of uh, foaming out here let's see right yes so that's something that uh, you see fine or i guess okay this is the relevant aspect high and low and the high concentration of long chain fatty acids at low temperature encourages excessive growth of these kinds of bacteria which again leads to filamentous bulking of sludge and there is another kind of bulking called non filamentous when we have low nutrient concentration which favors excess production of slime and thus you have viscous slime bulking let's say so that's another or non filamentous bulking let's say right so that's something to keep in mind so i guess we looked at a similar figure earlier and i think uh, we will look at it so pin flocks when we had high f by m i guess and thus leading to i guess uh, small weak flocks okay with respect to magnification i think i don't have that information flocks containing filamentous microorganisms probably at the right uh, mix with their uh, flock forming and filamentous microorganisms so you see the relevant backbone and the relevant uh, bigger flocks let's see difference between this and this set of uh, what do we see images right let's move on and so nocardia forming in aqueous sludge basin that's in a and b you can see the kind of forming i guess these are black and white pictures maybe we can get better pictures later and the microscopic uh, what do we say appearance of the nocardia forming let's see you can see the kind of uh, forming and these obviously do not settle down well right so that's something to keep in mind and you can see the difference between the two kinds of uh, what do we say bacteria or microbial populations let's see right okay so let's move on so we looked at activated sludge and the biological process so major aspect obviously is design how do i go about it so here based on thumb rules or such depending upon how much mass load or how much waste is coming in 
you have some uh, what we say factors based upon which you can choose the relevant volume. In India, I do not think we choose that often. Simple models based on calculation, simple and design variable values that is what we are going to look at let us see right. So, let us see what we have. So, conventional actuated sludge. So, primary sedimentation out here, aeration out here. So, I think water is flowing in this direction and then after aeration after the microbes have degraded the relevant substrate and the right kind of microbes have been formed here you have circular sedimentation tanks or secondary clarifiers let us see right. So, that is the relevant process. So, here as can be seen they have what seems like a sinusoidal flow. So, that you have plug flow characteristics let us see right. Again we looked at why plug flow or uh, relatively ideal case plug flow is better than uh, what we say the usual or ideal CSTR, but we are not going into that right now. So, design process one based on loading factors right simple methods and complex methods are you know based on comp uh, computer simulation we are not going to that in detail this to or not we are not going to discuss this we will briefly look at it we will spend more time on this aspect right let us move on. So, volumetric loading let us say volumetric loading right this is the mass of the waste or your waste or the substrate or the microbes food that is coming in and volumetric loading let us say right and you can calculate the volume by choosing the value of volumetric loading factor you know we will not look at this. Another aspect is trying to maintain this f by m ratio as I mentioned q s naught by v x or s naught by theta x and then you can calculate the relevant uh, variables that you need let us say right. So, this is something we already looked at earlier. So, I will not come back to look at this, but based on what you may want to maintain of these three variables, you can get the other variables from here. And so, in general SRT 5 to 15, but it depends on the kind of plant the extent of removal F, F by M 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 kgs of BOD per kg of MLSS per day. And I think we saw that the bulking was occurring when we were at around 0 0.8 or such if I am not wrong right ok as you see high f by m 0.8 right fine. So, that is one aspect. So, how do we go about it choose the f by m and x that you want from that calculate the HRT and then calculate the volume of basin, but again we are not going into that. So, loading factors right and what are the typical values theta x ranges from 2000 to 5000 volatile suspended solids typically let us say 2500 ml VSS is what you would uh, have or is fine ok. So, theta is the hydraulic retention time keep that in mind it is not the cell residence time. So, as you see uh, the theta hydraulic retention time is much lesser theta c obviously around the range of a few days let us see right. So, that is something to keep in mind ok. So, with a large basin and smaller x what can you achieve? So, improved effluent quality and lower effluent suspended solids. In general for a well run uh, what we say treatment plant you will still have some BOD leaving the system, but that is not due to BOD that is soluble it is BOD that is uh, relatively suspended let us say right. So, you would want to bring down that uh, what do we say effluent suspended solids, but if the basin is too large and leading to x being very small then difficulty in removing the relevant organics and also leading to poor thickening let us say right. Again we are not going to uh, discuss this. So, simple models how are we uh, going to go about it choose values for the primary design variables. What are they obviously theta c and limiting substrate removal how much do you want to remove based on that you can choose a safety factor. So, soluble BOD 5 most BOD 5 in effluent is due to suspended solids as I mentioned earlier and you will look at the ammonia nitrogen the oxygen production that is required obviously it increases with greater theta c and then the amount of sludge that is being produced let us see right. So, effluent limiting substrate concentration uh, this is something that we got right based on the relevant uh, mass balance. So, we applied the mass balance and we also looked at the equation where we had rate of r net x is equal to our rate of production of x minus rate of loss of x substituted relevant aspects and we came up with this right. So, based on uh, what do we say the laboratory data you can have these kinds of information mu max, k s, k d and such. 
So based on that, you can calculate S or, you know, given S, calculate the theta C, let us see, right. And then if HRT, you can calculate that if X is assumed or if biomass concentration also can be calculated if HRT is assumed, right. So for that, that is what you have here, right. Earlier based on S, you can calculate theta C. And now if X is given, you can calculate theta. If theta is given, you can calculate X, right, one or the other. Typically, you will choose the hydraulic retention time because that will, uh, what do we say, give an idea about the volume of the relevant uh, tank, let us say, right. Well, not only HRT, that will give an idea about, uh, what do we say, the flow characteristics too. So, that is something you need to look at it, right. So, mass flow of biomass required, right, Px, we looked at this. So, this has to be a minus as we discussed earlier. So, this is also required. Why? From that, you will have to calculate the mass flow of oxygen. So, we looked at S equation. We looked at X equation. S is a function of theta. X is a function of theta and theta C, right? And then we are calculating Px, right? And then we will calculate the mass of oxygen, right? General steps out there. Again, depending on what variables are given, are not given, you will have to play around and depending upon uh, what do we say the assumptions that we made, maybe we might change the assumptions uh, or let us say we might choose other assumptions. So, you might have to change the mass balance a bit. But again, please note that the mass balance, there are only two aspects. This is a CHTR and we either apply the mass balance around the entire system for the substrate and the microorganisms. If you want to look at the uh, ratio of recycle, how much I need to recycle, what do I need to do? I need to look at the relevant mass balance around the clarifier on the biomass, let us say, right. So, from that and your relevant uh, mono equation kinetics, you can get whatever it is you want. So, it is all about mass balance, right. So, then you will be able to calculate the mass flow of oxygen required for S as BOD. We look at the oxygen requirements. So, actual oxygen transfer rate, right volumetric flow of air, we already know how to do that. In that AOTE or AOTR, you know that you need to calculate C average, right, based on the pressure, right, at that particular depth to the atmospheric pressure and the oxygen leaving the system, right. So, this is what we have. Based on that, you will calculate C average, let us say, right. And then, I guess you can calculate AOTE and so on and so forth and you will calculate the air flow total air flow that is required from this, right. You have the mass of oxygen required and you know these variables and thus you can calculate the required air flow. So, the number of diffusers obviously will depend upon this total air flow by the air flow at standard conditions or per diffuser, let us see. So, different kinds of uh, diffusers. So, every aeration diffusers on the right, the flow control wear out here so that you have relevant uh, outflow, right. So, again, different kinds of diffusers. Let me see if I have a better diffuser. So, here looks like they choose these kinds of aeration systems, especially on one side, so that there is a spiral roll or good mixing as it goes along what do we say as passes through the tank, let us say. Okay. So, diffused aeration. So, this is what we have cross section of a typical aeration tank illustrating the spiral flow pattern created by aeration on one side, right. So, you have this uh, spiral flow, at least uh, if not along the flow direction, perpendicular to the flow direction, you want to have good uh, mixing. So, that is what you are going to achieve and with that again, you are going to have uh, what do we say forward movement, let us see, right. So, calculations, mechanical aeration, power of mechanical aer aerators, we know that. Again, uh, actual efficiency with respect to standard efficiency where we look at the power or the energy requirements, we also looked at the relevant, what do we say, formula. And what do we have here? Total power required is the mass of oxygen by the efficiency or actual power per aerator. So, again, total power by standard power, uh, power per aerator into AE by CE. So, again, these are all very general, uh, what do we say, pieces of algebra, just fractions and so on and so forth, right. So, in summary, if Q is there, the flow rate of the concentration of uh, flow rate of the wastewater and the concentration of the wastewater, right. And uh, regulations will typically give you, if not efficiency, what is the outlet. For example, in uh, the plants discharging into Ganga, we know that the effluent BOD should be less than 10 milligram per liter. 
and from bench scale studies what are you going to have you are going to get the yield coefficient half maximum and I guess mu max sludge volume index sludge volume index will give you an idea about how well the sludge is settling and then safety factor or theta c and x can be chosen upfront based on the kind of system that you want to have and then you will calculate for p right uh, mass of or biomass production let us see right. So, with that I am uh, done with more or less done with uh, design. So, in the next session we will look at different kinds of activated sludge uh, process and I think we will look at a video so that we understand uh, the system in practical terms let us say and uh, coincidentally I am also out of time. So, thank you thanking you for your patience I will end today's session.